Hey everybody, this is Mark with AdTech, and in this video, we're going to be showing you how to terminate a CAT6A Ethernet cable. It is somewhat similar to other versions of Ethernet, but CAT6A requires a couple more specialized tools and materials, and the process is somewhat different for, you know, the addition of things to 6 and 6A. I'll go ahead and show you how to do it step by step. Some of my tips that I found it along the way, and just different things you should know going into this. So first of all, this is what we'll need. We will need this little jack right here. This is an RJ45 jack, and CAT6A does work with any RJ45 jack with staggered connectors. But what's specific about this one is it is shielded. So it has this metal on here, and it also has this clip on the top right here. That is for the ground wire. And we will do also need this right here. This is our load bar, which goes into there. So those are specific to this. Also, if you are getting a boot, you want to make sure that it is compatible with 6A cables because 6A and 6 is bigger than 5E. Okay, for tools, we will need a couple of pliers for working with the ground wire in this clip. We will need a Ethernet crimper. Any one should be fine, but you want to make sure it is going to be sturdy enough to handle 23 gauge wire. Uh, maybe a knife, maybe some scissors. I have copper tape, which I'll talk about in a little bit later. And then a screwdriver. I'll also show you why you might want that in a little bit. So first of all, we will go ahead and put some of the stuff we don't need off to the side for now. And let's go ahead and focus on stripping this cable. So certain crimping tools like this one do have positions for you to properly strip this cable. However, because 6 and 6A has a larger diameter, most standard crimpers are actually not going to work. So you may not want to use your crimper for stripping, um, so just keep that in mind. There are different types of cutters, but I actually really just prefer a razor blade. The casing on here is actually really soft, so it's quite easy to cut through. So that is just what we're going to do right here. Standard practice is to do about two inches. I like to do a little bit more in case something's on the tip of the wire that may be broken. So, you know, I do a little bit over two inches. It is really easy to work with longer cables than shorter ones. So what we'll do is we'll just take our knife, if you're doing the knife way, and just very carefully cut through the casing on here. And once we do get through that, we'll just go ahead and pull it right off. So once we do have the casing cut, the best way to do that is just to twist in opposite directions until you see that break and then just pull it right off just like that. Now, if you did it right, um, your foil may also come off, but I purposely don't cut it that deep. So if the foil doesn't come off that way, I don't have to ever worry about cutting the cable. Right here is our rip cord. This is not needed. It's just in case you want to pull back the casing some more. So we'll go ahead and cut that off right there. Next we have our foil. This can also come off. And the best way is just to either use your scissors or your knife just a little bit and cut that at the base and peel it off. Now, higher quality ethernet cable will also have this plastic wrap on it. First, you'll want to go ahead and pull back this metal. This is your ground wire. We'll pull that, bring it down off to the side, and then we'll go ahead and cut off this plastic as well. Now we have our wire exposed. Let's go ahead and pull these back to get them out of the way. And we wanna bend them pretty far down that way we can cut off this spline right here. This is what keeps everything in place. For this, I will use the cutting blade on my crimping tool. Just make sure you don't cut the cable when you do this. And we'll pull that right off just like that. So now we have all of our twisted pairs individually right here. Now all we have to do is just go ahead and unwind these. There's really no real good way to do this without any extra tools. Just take your time unwinding it. And then once you do have them unwound, we're gonna to wanna to make sure they are incredibly straight. It makes it a lot easier if they're straightened out. That's where the screwdriver comes in. And what I found to work really good is either you can just use your fingers, just pinch 
and kind of roll it along your finger and that helps straighten it out. Or if you take your screwdriver, you can just kind of pull it down just like that and then just drag up and then that really does help. You don't have to worry about putting too much force on this. These cables are fairly strong, don't pull super hard, but for most purposes, just with a little bit of pressure, you should be good. You don't have to worry about them breaking too much. Just make sure you always do leave a lot of extra in case that ever does happen. So we're just gonna unstrand all of these and straighten them out very smooth, which will help a lot when it comes to putting it into the connector. Okay, so now that we have all of these combed out, individually stranded, um, one thing we probably should have done before we even stripped it though, is that we wanna put our cable boot on. So let's go ahead and put this on. It even helps to put both on at the same time, that way you never have to worry about forgetting it. So let's go ahead and slide that on, push that down off to the side. So we'll keep our ground wire down here for now. And what I like to do, is to start off with the wiring. And when I do this, I'm going to be terminating for the B standard. So I actually like to bring the browns down off to the side, that way I don't mix up orange and brown because in this cable, they look fairly similar. So for the B standard, it is going to be white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And then now that we got all of those lined up just like that, you're gonna wanna just kinda play with them a little bit, get them straight in the same direction and make sure that nothing is overlapping and just get them all lined up and straightened out, ready to go into our load bar. So now that we got this pretty much all straightened, combed out and in order, I'm gonna go ahead and take my crimper and I'm gonna cut off the cables to a smooth, flat end. And then I'll take my load bar and we will just go ahead and put this on. There is a flat, smaller side and there's an open plastic side. We want the open side to go on the cables. Just slide that on just like that. Slowly rock it back and forth so that the cables will go through because they are actually staggered. If you can see that, they are somewhat staggered. And once we do put this on, we wanna make sure the order is still correct. So we will go ahead and verify that and it looks like they are still good. So now we want to move the load bar to about a quarter inch away from the casing so right about there, I do leave a little extra room. And then next, we will go ahead and cut it with our crimper. And making sure it's very straight, we will go ahead and cut it close to the load bar. And then now we will just go ahead and put on our clip. So it only goes on one way. Well, it fits on both ways, but it only goes on one way. You want the orange side towards you, the brown side away, and you want the clip, the this part right here, facing down. So the copper pins are facing up. Orange is to you. We just slide this in. You may need to actually flatten your cable a little bit to make sure it fits in, but in my case with these connectors, it fits. I just use my palm to push it all the way in. And if we look at the tip, you should see copper in all the colors at the very end. So make sure that everything fits in properly all the way in, and then it is time to crimp it. Okay, so I just got a one that's been broken before just so I can show you how to crimp it because I don't want to actually do that cable right now. So it's actually pretty simple. You just go ahead and put this into the 8P, the 8 pin slot and push it all the way down until it hits this end. Now, you wanna keep a little bit of force on there to make sure that the cables don't fall out when you're crimping it. So just keep a little bit of pressure on there and then you can crimp that all the way. And then when it, and see when, how it's not opening yet, that means it's not done until you hit that last click, then it will open back up. Pull that out and it will now be successfully crimped it will crush the connector on the bottom, 
So that will actually make sure it stays in place. It doesn't work the best, but um, there's that. So now we do have our ground wire right here. What I like to do is I like to wrap it around the cable just like this. And then if you don't have a connector with this clip on it, I recommend getting some copper tape. This is conductive on both sides and that will just help um, to conduct with the ground wire. If you do have one of these clips, you don't really need your copper tape. So what I like to do is instead of buying a tool, I just use some pliers and I pull down this connector and then we just make sure it is flattened out just like that. And then we will take the pliers and bend it off on the sides. And then now all you have to do is just slide your boot on over that. It'll fit perfectly. And there you go, successfully crimped and completed cable. Works pretty nicely. Be sure to test it. And you know, if one of the lights doesn't light up, that means you got a problem and you're gonna have to redo it again. If you don't get it right the first time, it's okay. It will take lots of practice and wasted connectors, as you can see, before you get all these lights to turn on. So there you go. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. This is Mark with AtTech, and I'll see you in the next one.